All right, how's it going? Hope you guys are doing good. Happy Halloween. So I've reached a point where I've found myself peeking over that Apple customization prison wall, and I've begun to explore the underground ways to get around these restrictions. Maybe make your phone feel a little fresh, a little new. Because let's be honest, it's taken a considerable amount of time for iOS to become a truly customizable experience, because Apple has this death grip over their products that regarding the way they allow you to customize them, which can be a good thing and a bad thing. So they built these walls up, expect you to stay inside them, and then we always have to smuggle in these hacks to create a little bit more of a personalized experience. So while I'm definitely happy with all the new updates we've gotten, we aren't quite there yet. We finally got widgets with iOS 14, kind of a step closer to Android level customization, but I feel like anywhere I place my phone down, my ringer goes off and there's five different people checking their phones and all those phones happen to look the same, maybe besides a wallpaper. So this year I decided to try out this iPhone level Hackintosh customization. I know a lot of people get super into this, like hardcore making all these shortcuts and crazy app icons, but really and honestly, I'm just gonna show you what I started personally doing every time I set up a home screen. I keep it nice and simple, nothing overcomplicated. So I've checked out a lot of the widget apps out there, a lot of which are really complicated and make it feel like you're diffusing a bomb. But this one offers you a level of customization without all those ridiculous ads, you know what I mean? So right from the start, any device I have that has a home screen, I just take everything, wipe the screen fresh from apps. I also try to offload extra junk I have, like photos in my gallery. But that's a story for another day. It's not something that everyone needs to do, but I find that anytime I jump to a new device, sometimes I pull over junk from an old one that I haven't cleared yet. Now the next step is actually choosing a wallpaper for you know whatever you're into. I'll have a massive collection from HK3's Twitter link down below, so if you wanna check that out. There's hundreds of wallpapers that I've personally used in the videos, and they're all free. There's a couple links that are paid if you wanna support the artists, just like private sections, but there's hundreds of free wallpapers. And they're all really good quality, so no more finding the wallpaper you want and then figuring out that it's compressed so much that you can't even tell what it is anymore. Now, once you pick a wallpaper, set it as your background and boom. That's step one. Now, my experience with trying out a lot of these widget apps, I found that Widgie is the least problematic crap-free app because I feel like a lot of these apps, you download them onto your phone, right when you open the app, you instantly get raided with hundreds of ads. So it's nice to see an app that doesn't bombard you with garbage instantly. All right, so within this app, there's a ton of options to choose from. The main one I've been running lately is called Clean Info. It's nice, it's simple, I love it. And it looks like a lot of you guys do too. But there's also a lot of other really insane stuff people have made on here. So you should be able to find something that fits your needs if you want that really minimal style or you want something a little bit more adventurous. Some are gonna be more functional than others. This literally looks like an Apple Keynote summary, and I've found others that are just insane. Either way, if you can't find exactly what you want, you can also just make one yourself. There's tons of options, and there's lots of good ones. Earlier, I showed a couple variations of what these widgets look like on a home screen, just so you have an idea of what they look like before jumping into the app. So number one, first thing you need to do is open Widgie and go to the Manage tab. Here's where you're actually gonna be able to create a transparent widget, and that's under set transparent background. Since we already have a blank page, just hit the check mark and it'll generate the widget backdrop. It essentially appears transparent because it's just matching your wallpaper layer. From there, I then go to the explore tab and then this is pretty much the marketplace for all the widgets you can find. You're gonna find small, medium, large widgets that vary from weather reports, calendars, date and time information. I personally like that clean info widget, which happens to be a medium slot, so it doesn't take up half of your screen when you place it. And all you have to do is hit import and it adds the widget to your library. Now there's a bunch of widgets in here that advertise button functionality like dials and knobs to adjust your phone settings. But in reality, I found that most of them don't really work well, especially when you compare them to first party widgets. So I wouldn't rely on them too much. So whatever you decide on choosing, once you've imported it, you can head back over to the manage tab and then select an empty slot that matches the size of your widget. The widget I'm using happens to fit within that medium slot. So you just select it, check it, apply the theme, and then you can pick from this massive list of fonts, mess with the color palette. There's a ton of customization. Quick tip, if you just keep it to none, I think it looks pretty good. But yeah, once everything's all set, all you have to do is add the widget to your home screen, which is just a long press. You have to go back into jiggle mode Hit the plus, find Widgie in the widget options all the way at the bottom. Then you have to scroll to the slot you use. So this is the slot that you assign the widget to, find it, in my case again, medium, throw your essential apps back on screen, and then keep the rest in the app drawer 
and you can make a really clean looking home screen. And then you've got yourself something a bit different, more personalized, fairly simple to implement that doesn't rely on your entire phone being controlled by shortcuts. I don't really like app icon packs specifically because they're really jank and they require Siri shortcuts. Apple just doesn't support icons yet, even though it would be absolutely amazing. But right now it's kind of janky. So I feel like this is something that gives you a bit more freedom with customizing iOS and it's not completely a gimmick. I've been running it for about a month now and it's been quite stable. I'd say the only hiccups it has occasionally is refreshing information. So sometimes your weather data or your battery percentage isn't perfectly synced with your phone, but it's also free if you use one widget and if you want them all, it's like $5. So you really can't complain. Someone's always figuring out how to get around those Apple walls and when it works, it's so nice. That's pretty much it. Hope this helped. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Happy Halloween.